Coming up, 90s nostalgia or Trumpapalooza. The new Roseanne reboot is a runaway hit, and like it or not, the president may deserve some of the credit for that. Plus, there is no textbook on how to grow up, but do we really need college courses to teach us how to do it right? Welcome to Adulting 101. And later, a lesson in the Dr. Dre rule, why Virginia Tech's women's lacrosse team might need to consult Chris Rock the next time they decide to rap along with Chris Brown. Like It or Not starts right now. Hey, welcome into our weekly rundown with Britt McHenry and Guy Lambert. I'm Bram Weinstein. Either one of you uh, guest speakers for the adulting classes yet? <laughs> I, I can't. Even. Wait till we get to that topic. I'll be. I'll lay into it. Haven't gotten there yet. I'm not an adult either. I still watch sitcoms <laughs> on television. You could say time. you're a Toys R Us kid, but not anymore because Toys R Us is on. So. Yeah, not anymore. I still read Cosmo too. Uh, let's check what's trending this week. <laughs> yeah, that's a lie. And first up, here's another one of the polls that they would have gotten wrong. Roseanne Barr is a smash hit again in 2018. She got the gang back together and brought her famous namesake sitcom Back to the Future and found it not only still resonates, it is ringing true. Barr, John Goodman, the rest of their original TV family are back, only now Barr is a very loud Donald Trump supporter. More people watched her debut of the reboot than the end of the original series 21 years ago. So like it or not, Roseanne is speaking for the populace. She's back. I, I like it. I think it shows that contrary to what Hollywood believes, there's a demand for the moderate to right-leaning individuals across this country. You can't deny 18 million viewers. I think an executive, if they haven't already, TMZ is reporting that they're reaching out to Tim Allen to reboot The Last Man Standing, possibly on Fox. He would get 8.3 million viewers on Fridays, and ABC just canceled it. And I've spoken to him. He said it was because of his conservative views. So you know what? It's a conservative here. I can tell you it's selling and people are watching. Well, good for Roseanne. I'm a big Roseanne fan. And it doesn't matter who she likes. She likes Trump. I like you, Britt, and you like Trump. Uh, <laughs> Not many people do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of backlash for that. Yeah. Uh, what's really interesting to me and what I find very, very interesting is that the president of the United freaking states is talking about this as he goes and tours the country. You Ratings know, matters to him. Ratings matters to him. For a TV show? Yes. Uh, for every more TV so show. More so than your approval rate? Ratings, more so than what's happening in North Britt Korea? Britt knows this. Ratings matters to him. Yeah. He believes there is weight that carries with that. He believes there's messaging behind all of that. He's the king of ratings. He does. That's why he yes. got elected. He's the president of the United States and talking about a TV show. Don't you have more pressing issues to there address? Is, there's another thing to point out here if you go into the demographics of it. It's not to dismiss what she got. I mean, this is a big audience that she got. But if you look at the cities that did watch this en yeah. masse, Tulsa, Cincinnati, Kansas City, places where he garnered a lot of the vote, New York was not in the top 20 of the cities that watched this. L.A. was not in the top 30. So the major population centers actually didn't tune yeah, in. Yeah, but you know show. what? A lot of those people are, they're working late hours. They're taking the subway. That demographic is tuning in. They're having dinner. They're watching Roseanne, although I don't like that couch. I never liked that couch. <laughs> and here's the other point, too. We have a better couch. The number one TV show of the week was the Stormy Daniels interview. Mm -hmm. Oh, because that had basketball. Did he talk about stop. that? No. How about talk about that? I'm glad you didn't talk about that. Let's just let that die. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Parkland survivor David Hogg didn't get into the school he wanted. Ha, 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 you suck. That's what you get for surviving pointless mass murder and not just taking it like a man. Those are the sentiments of a popular broadcaster. Laura Ingram, shut up your drivel. Or back down quickly because all those corporations who buy your ad time told you to. What a big bad bully you are. Daddy told you to say sorry, and you always listen to corporate daddy, don't you? Like it or not, and I can't even believe I have to ask this, picking on victims over their future crosses the line. Let, let me go first on this yeah, one. Yeah, take it I, I don't like this not one bit. This just shows the climate of the country thanks to Mr. President Trump. It, it, this is so cynical. How dare you speak to a 17-year-old kid like that? Uh, and, and then, you know, obviously, he's trying to push the message of gun control, so forth and so on. But you're going to come out, you're going to hop on TV and then say what you say to this 17-year-old kid. And then the only reason you're going to backtrack is because tis this season for Easter. First of all, when, when does he turn 18? 
Who knows? I tried looking it up. He could be an 18-year-old as a kid. We have 18-year-olds serving in Afghanistan right now. Are they? Would you say that they're kids? This is the adult you form of bullying. You can't criticize inflammatory speech that that, that that David Hogg is dished out. I think it's okay to criticize his political position on things, and I, and I don't take issue with that with what Laura did. However, this crosses the line, goes beyond the pale. Very much. What, so. How does this have anything to do with the further well, discourse? Well, he did to tweet sit there about and it. Criticize whether he got into a college or yeah. not. He did, he it did tweet mean about it several times. I, I mean, I think people also need to understand that UCLA, because there was a CNN anchor who said, and I quote, what dumbass schools didn't want you. Well, you know what? UCLA is the number one ranked public school in the country with an 18% emissions rate from out of state students. So it's a pretty good school. That's a dumbass statement, if I do say so myself. So I think you can have this larger discussion. I think. I think it's ridiculous that he had a list of her top advertisers and enraged the social media mob. Is that the culture we have now? If you disagree with someone, you want them to lose their That's job? That's what she did, though. <laughs> exactly. She went after him over him she getting denied to get into didn't college. Get to. That, is that really bullying? Yes, yes. it's very much so bullying. <laughs> yes, it is. Everybody is so intimidated and everything's bullying Who's nowadays. the adult here? She's the one saying you're not supposed to speak on topics because you're not intelligent enough to do it, and yet she bullied and him she over college choices? And she apologized to him. He, she apologized. A, a little bit too late for that. And he still continued this boycott. Interestingly enough, me Media Matters had the same boycott, and I want to know who is pushing him to be as angry and aggressive as he's been. Outside of her saying it's Easter, and can that's I not why say she's that because he's 18 years old? Well, no. Another reason why she's apologizing is because she's losing a ton of sponsors. She's she's worried to become the next Bill O'Reilly. She this, doesn't want to go. This kid, I guess I have to call him kid, has become the left's perfect tool because he can call the NRA child murderers. He can blame 17 deaths on he's Marco a victim Rubio, victim of a massacre. And he can call politicians to the NRA, but you can't criticize him because he's a kid. I don't know why a lobbying firm should be part of the national discourse of what we should do about anything. To be honest, I would rather have someone who was a victim in a massacre to have a larger say in how his life has been affected than someone who's been on the outside telling everybody what to do and they're paying money and they are and they have decided that this is what the bottom line is for everybody and how it betters their bottom line. And if you want to criticize him, criticize his stance on gun control. Not that he didn't get into the school that he wants to get into. Yeah. Come He's on. Fair. Yeah, it was a little too much. Uh, college is, uh, speaking of college, it's supposed to be the place where we grow up and learn to be an adult, but is that concept really something you need a classroom for? Like it or not, Adulting 101, class in session, and that's next. I don't like it. Always something different. And this is a different type of story. What does it say about us as a society when colleges have to offer classes in adulting? It's the new reality, especially for millennials. The University of South Florida is one of the latest to offer help to struggling young adults. <laughs> the classes offer help in things like budgeting and financial aid. And the school also offers workshops that help students handle the anxiety that comes with their new responsibilities, like making shopping lists, preparing meals, and paying expenses. So adulting 101, like it or not. When it's simplified like that, yeah. it sounds ridiculous that you can't figure out that I have $5, maybe lunch shouldn't cost me $7, <laughs> but however, um, there are some things that I think should have been taught in high school beer. or college. Like, can someone explain to them what a mortgage actually yeah. is and mm -hmm. what goes into that yeah. or how to literally buy a car or renting versus owning housing and what that means for them? And so there are some things that like even as when I was young and growing up, they never taught me those things. I kind of had to learn on my own or had parents that would teach me how to do that. So bigger issues like that, like what is a 401k? What is yeah. a pension? All these kind of money management yeah. things that are very serious with a housing market as expensive as it is and the amount of money millennials are making. I can understand that yeah. that type of lesson like needs to be taught. Yeah. But how to walk and talk at the same time should not be part of the equation here. You touched on parents, which is a very important thing. Within the African American community, I can tell you, back in 2010, the median income for African Americans about $5,000. For whites, it was $97,000. What does that say? It says that within the African American community, we need to do better with regard to learning our expenses. It, it does tell you, though, what it suggests is that we don't know how to grow up. Yeah. 
it, what does that say about our country? If we're saying we need to teach somebody how to act responsibly in all facets of their life, yeah. to not know what right or wrong is, and to not get into debt, and to not understand that you can't ring up credit cards and not have it affect your life later. Like, that's eh, the thing. I might still do that. <laughs> what, 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 I mean, what is it? Snowflaking 101 is really what it is. Like, do you need a special safe place? To... <laughs> College is supposed to be the time of your life. And that's what you should be doing. But maybe finance would help yours truly, mm. along with cooking. I think the guy I'm dating would like it if I cooked <laughs> better. So maybe those classes. Yeah, I think I'll pass on the cooking break. <laughs> I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than riding in your car with the windows rolled down singing, this is how we do it. But when it comes to the Virginia Tech this women's lacrosse team, it. this isn't how you do it. Like it or not, we'll be right back. Ready, you don't know how to cook? What are the rules when a Dr. Dre song comes on the radio or plays at a club? What is the procedure that goes into effect? Because sometimes I'm with my white friends and the Dr. Dre song will come on. And there's a lot of in a Dr. Dre song. And they want to enjoy it, but they can't really enjoy it around me. So they start taking out the or mumbling the and it's just a sad sight to see. <laughs> so Chris Rock explained it back in 2009 with his HBO stand-up, Kill the Messenger. But apparently, Virginia Tech's women's lacrosse team didn't get the memo. A video of the team went viral this week showing them singing along to Freaky Friday by Little Dicky and Chris Brown, in words and all. After the backlash, the team's coach said the team was sorry and called it a, quote, teachable moment. So like it or not, should white people skip the sing-along when <laughs> the song is a by a black artist and has the N word in it? I, I don't I don't like it because and there uh, the outrage over this, it's a popular song on the radio. Mm -hmm. The the video's gone viral. How do you just censor yourself? These girls are having a good time with each other. That was not and you can see from the video, that was not their intent. They didn't change the words, right? No, they, they didn't add anything to it, right? But he's just supposed to be like silent. Is, is it when a, an artist makes a song? Are they expecting people to sing it? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So let me let me return that question to you. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Hell no. Okay. It, but look, guys, I'm just going to be real here. This is why I've said time and time again. Kill the N word. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense that I can sing it. I can say it right now, and you can't say it. What sense does that make? This was a word that for years on end was used to African Americans. It was used to put them down. This was a word that slave masters would say right before they raped or killed my grandma, mm -hmm. my great, great grandma. Why would I glorify that word? And then why can I sing it and you can't? That just makes why would it be no okay to say sense to me. the B word in another song, which is used mm -hmm. white and black artists alike. Why is it okay to say a lot of, and I, granted, I get it. What we're talking about is a slur, right? as opposed to inappropriate language in general. Mm -hmm. So at what point can we just say, that's the song, that's the artist, there's their art, I get to sing it back to them. Isn't, wasn't that their intent no, in the you first can't, place? But you can't sing it, Bram. You can't do that. I mean, it's offensive. But, and it, it, but that's why it just doesn't make any sense that You're I You're telling me not to listen to it or have it appeal to me in any way. No, I'm, telling, I'm telling the artist to stop using the word Agree because it's not fair. I can use it, but you can't? Right. And, I feel like and, the referee right now. <laughs> yeah, it just it just doesn't make sense to me at all, Britt. And but I'd have you to should have heard what she was singing during the break. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> I'm just a dancer, so it's okay. With no rhythm. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll see where all this goes. Yeah, I don't I, like it. I saw an bit. interview with Jay Z years ago with Jay Z and Oprah where he said it brings power back to the word yeah, to a lot. use it. But I agree with you that I don't think anyone should use it because it has offensive roots and you could avoid situations like this. Yeah. Well, a lot of black people will say it's endearing. I use it as a term of endearment. I say the hell with that. Kill it in that way where there's nobody gets offended. I like you. Too. He's good today. He is. Uh, a, cute, uh, down. a few things are agreed upon these days, but we do have a consensus on the Washington Nationals. It might be their year again. <laughs> Baseball opened and Washington is a prohibitive favor to win their week division, and that means they would be back in the postseason come October, but they've never won a postseason series since moving to Washington, and with Bryce Harper's future lingering, <laughs> it feels like 2018 better be the year. Like it or not, we're going to get a parade here this fall. Uh, Bryce Harper's future isn't lingering. It's already out the door. Let's you think? I don't oh, know yeah. about that. Many of the people believe that this is a, there's a distinct possibility that he is going to stay. Still have a foot in the sports world. Yeah. I have sources who've said they're nowhere near where they need to be in negotiating. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to want that historic big money deal. Uh, but it is their year. If they don't do it this year, 
it's going to be rebuilding. So Why does this feel like deja vu to me? Don't haven't we said this the year before, and the year before that, in the year before that? Every year we're let down. Every sports team in this town <laughs> is like, every year we say that. And it's so disappointing, especially when it comes to the Nats, because in in retrospect, they have the biggest and best chance of making it all the way to the well, World Series. Well, I mean, it's it's deserved because they may have the best pitcher in the game playing for them right now, and they may have. At, bar min at bare minimum, the most marketable player in the game and certainly one of the best in Bryce Harper and a very good lineup around but them. You and, know so, and they're playing in a division which is of good fortune that they have woeful teams in Miami and Atlanta and average teams in the Mets in Philadelphia, which means their road to just get into the tournament of the playoffs is easier than mm. many teams. They can have all those big names. If they don't have a bullpen that can hold up, which has haunted them for the last couple years, or a lineup that can hit, when Danny Espinosa in a game five is your best hitter, which happened a couple years ago, you're not making the World Series. Yeah. So get those bats moving. <laughs> Good luck, Nats. Can I get a like? Can I get an it? Can I get an or not? When it comes to sports, cheerleaders are expected to lead us into the celebration of the team. For most girls, the opportunity to cheer starts at an early age. For those who love it, well, they continue to cheer professionally as an adult. After all, why would football fans go to a football game if they can't see cheerleaders on the sideline? Now with the Me Too movement in full effect, one NFL team has decided to focus on him too. For the first time in NFL history, the Los Angeles Rams announced two men would join its cheerleading squad. Both the Ravens and the Colts have male stuntmen, but these two guys are the first ever male dancers for a professional NFL team. Like it or not? Not. Don't care. Yeah. Like, I did not go to a football game to see male cheerleaders. I will agree with you on that. Sorry. Yeah. Like, I, I don't even understand the point of this. What are they going to do? No one pays attention to the NFL cheerleaders anyway. Well, well I'll that's why I, I that's why I like it, because then they can actually do some stunts instead of half-naked girls Honestly, at this point, most of them are pretty much naked, and gyrating all over the field. Like, I'd like younger girls to see actual athleticism on display, and perhaps stuntmen can But, help but these guys them. aren't stuntmen. These guys will be doing the same dances, the same cheers that the women are doing. It's Work a little it. different. <laughs> Good. Since when do they hey, Maybe actually... we want eye candy, too. Since, w <laughs> Since I go to football games. Uh, if I you watch say so, uh, right. that's why you're there, to see the two male cheerleaders right. and Put not Chris Jared Hemsworth. Goff or Todd Gurley. Put Got Chris it. Hemsworth in a cheerleading tight oh. costume. I'm watching. Yeah, Rams, sign me up. Now I'm buying my tickets. Uh, good news for the people of Walmart. No longer will you have to be subjected to the depravity that is Cosmo. And their constant front cover stories promising better sex. The changes ban the magazine from their checkout lines. They're calling it hypersexualized and degrading. Fans will still be able to find the latest issues of the magazine in that section. The advocacy group, the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, helped push this policy change. And now they want Target and Walgreens to follow suit. So like it or not, Cosmo is really the problem with society. Oh, gosh. Take this is the dumbest thing. Uh, he, have you seen TV Guide lately? Have you seen what's on the cover of TV Guide? It's worse than what's on Cosmo. TV Guide exists still? <laughs> yeah, well, if you look at it online, it does. Okay. Uh, I think this is a dumb thing. I mean, a lot of people are so sensitive nowadays. Who cares? I, who even looks at the, the cover of Cosmo nowadays? I mean, look, you can't be a conservative and right-leaning, even though this seems like it conflicts, and not believe in freedom of speech and having those options there. But Cosmopolitan, as a girl, it's always that magazine. We saw some pictures of it with beautiful women. And then you open it, and the content is just terrible. Like, do we really need to know about your hot spots and <laughs> how to turn them on? How about you? Just well, I do, but you know, <laughs> speak for yourself. You're you know? Cosmo Bram? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to take adulting 101. That was that not helps. what I was expecting. Are you? <laughs> No, I Send Cosmos what is wrong with talking about a healthy sex life? Absolutely nothing. Right? You know, it's pornography like, is pornography. This isn't. Right? There's a like, delineation. It's like a hair here. away from yeah. it, though. Okay, if you say so. Now okay. I'm becoming an adult. <laughs> now <laughs> Bram wants to read it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> now I might sign up. You get the Rams cheerleaders, I get Cosmo. Fair Millennials enough. already ruined shade restaurants and napkins, and like it or not, the way we sleep could be next. We've got more on the top sheet debate, if there is one. We'll be right back. She said, do you love me? I tell her only partly. I only love my bed and my mom. I'm sorry. I was told we're not supposed to sing songs like this. <laughs> Just, the Just a few part. moments ago, actually. You really don't want to hear me sing in general, so we'll continue on. Uh, finally tonight, a question from one of our great fans. Where we stand might depend on how old we are. Take a look. 
In the 90s, Seinfeld made us question whether to tuck or untuck that top sheet. Now millennials, getting rid of it altogether. So, like it or not, sleeping with the sheets on. Hmm. Why would you? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is really kind of weird. This is a movement to get rid of the top sheet? That's a real thing? I mean, I get rid of the top sheet, but it's only because I just don't do laundry like I should. <laughs> what does Cosmo say about so it? So laziness <laughs> is really the key to, to not having a top sheet, I guess. It, my top sheet usually ends up on the floor by the time I wake up for some reason. I don't know why. I just sleep wild. Kind of, I'm going to ask what you're doing. It, 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 <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's not a really a big deal for me, you know. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, it's more comfortable to have just the comforter, or do they not have that I mean, either? I, I think <laughs> sheets What's happening right feel now? better, but it's like, I guess, just getting rid of a sheet. Just do they just sleep with towels? Like, <laughs> what are millennials doing that I don't what know do about? What do you do, they might. Top sheet. Really? Okay. Well, of course. Like, you, you untuck it, and you get underneath it, and it's... You know, comfortable. See, and, mine was never tucked you know, to begin with. And I would feel like I'd have to wash my comforter all the time if it wasn't for the top sheet thing. <laughs> See, these why these people need adulting classes. They're not using sheets. Just going to Bed Bath and Beyond after this. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> all right. Meantime, uh, we'll see what Roseanne thinks about it next week. She'll tell America what to do about it. For Britt, I'm Guy, I'm Bram. Have a great week.